Hey, hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at regressive, proportional, and progressive taxes and understand how the government can use taxes in order to promote equity and more than anything to realize that not all taxes actually promote equity in the, in the way that you think they might. So let's take a look at these three different types of taxes. So take a look. We got regressive taxes, proportional taxes, and progressive taxes. Right? And a regressive tax, let's make sure we have a good understanding of what this means, is a tax that consists of a larger percentage of a poor household's income than a rich household's income. Right? So there, an example of these are indirect taxes. Indirect taxes are regressive, and sales taxes are a good example. Right? So, for example, if, I, if a 10% tax on $100, good, $100 worth of good is $10, right? to, a, to a poor household, 10 bucks is a lot more than to a rich person's household. And so the result is that regressive taxes actually worsen, worsen income inequality in society, right? Because they actually extract a higher percentage of a higher dollar amount, not a higher percentage, a high relative dollar amount of a poor person's uh, income than a rich person's income. So regressive taxes are not exactly the best way to um, distribute income in an equitable way throughout a country. Proportional taxes, take a look at these. This is a tax that remains constant as a proportion of income as incomes rise. So this is a direct tax on income and maybe a flat tax, for example. A lot of countries or in the United States, I know it became really popular. Let's talk about a flat tax. And what that means is basically if you make $10,000 a year, $50,000 a year, $100,000 a year, a million dollars a year, you're going to pay 15% of that in tax. And that sounds, that sounds nice, right? You pay a 15% of their income in regardless of the income level. But proportional taxes do, not, do nothing to actually promote income equality. They won't exactly worsen it. But if everybody's paying the same tax, regardless of really their ability to pay that tax, then it's not really making the, the distribution of income more, more, more equal. Okay. So what does that leave us with? Well, obviously it leaves us with progressive taxes. And this is a tax that increases as a percentage of total income as income increases. So what does that mean? It says the more you make, the higher your tax percentage is. And roughly in the United States, if you make $40,000 a year, which is about an average salary for a professional in the U.S., you pay about 25% in tax, all told, federal, state, and local taxes. If you make $100,000 a year, you have to pay 40% tax, which is quite a bit, right? I mean, obviously, 25% of 40 is, is $10,000. So if you make 40, you're going to pay $10,000 in tax. But if you make $100,000, you're going to pay, what, $40,000 in taxes or four times, okay? So that's a really important idea to look at when you think about progressive taxes, right? They do promote greater income equality, because those who can afford to pay the most do, and those whose incomes are lower and cannot afford to pay as much pay less. And this leaves poor households with more disposable income to enable a higher standard of living. And there's one thing to kind of clear this up in your mind. If, if you live in an industrialized nation, take the United States, basically for a family of four to have a good, solid standard of living you need to make about $50,000 a year as a household. Okay. So what does that mean? It means that the first $50,000 that any family makes is the most important $50,000 that any family makes. So as a result of that, the way progressive taxes work is the first 50, let's just make it $50,000 will be taxed at one rate, let's say 25%. Then your next $50,000, if you're lucky enough to make more than that, say from fifty dollars to $100,000, would be taxed at, say, 30%, or, say, 40%, as my example here. Then after $100,000, that next, however much money you make, gets taxed at a higher rate, say, $45,000. And the logic there is this. To have a decent standard of living, people's for most important amount of money that they earn is the first $50,000 or whatever, depending on the country, right, that you need. If you were living in a place like Nicaragua, like I lived in, it's really like the first $20,000 you need. And you can live a great life on twenty grand. okay? So it's relative to the cost of living. But I'm just using the United States as an example, as a personal example also, in many ways. And then I know that living there, you basically need to have a $50,000 income. 
in order to live a standard of living that is middle class, right? In the middle, middle of middle class. Okay, so that's why the, that's the logic behind progressive taxes. And I think that's a really nice way of you to think about it. Because it taxes the first $50,000 less, it's saying that that is the most important $50,000 that one needs to survive or to have basic, their basic standard of living held, or, you know, basic standard of living. Then anything after that is extra. And so therefore, you should be able to, you get taxed at a higher rate because it's less valuable to that same standard of living that the country or the government is trying to target. All right. I hope that that is a helpful explanation of progressive taxes. But the key, and, and this is just a, a, a little repetitive, but the progressive income taxes have proven to be the best method for reducing income inequality in a country. And it's no surprise, really, that the most um, equitable countries or the countries with the most, the most equal countries in the world in terms of income um, distribution are also the most progressive uh, tax systems in the world. So that's kind of cool, right? So say that again. The most equal countries in the world have the most progressive tax systems, which means the more you make, the more you get taxed. All right, my friends, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.